I have got a Ping G410, um, <clears throat> nine degrees, I believe. This is actually very new. That's all of my clubs are, which you'll find out. But uh, this is a, yeah, new shaft, the amount of what, I think this used to be the whiteboard. Um, it's actually a shaft I've used like my, my whole life pretty much as a, as a junior and I've gone back into it the last couple of years in the driver. So a shaft I'm comfortable with and uh, yeah, it's the it's the plus, so it's not the LST. There's an LST version, which I think is a lower spinning head. I have a bit more, I like to have a bit more spin. So I've got the G410 plus, nine degrees set up neutral. No one else to blame but me really. Uh, well, you always think about the whole bag, like, you know, you don't, you, you aren't gonna sign with a manufacturer if you know there's a big gap somewhere in terms of the quality, but that isn't the case with most of the brands, I think it's fair to say now, but uh, in my case, the, the driver was a big, a big part. You know, I've used the ping driver for two, two and a half years. So um, I was very reluctant to move away from that, you know, because I'd struggled historically with my driver and found this club, which, you know, I've, I've certainly grown in confidence with over time. So I didn't want to give that up. So it was a big factor in you know, me uh, moving to ping, I suppose. So, uh, well, I don't carry my driver very far. So I, I probably carry my driver around 275, 280, which is, in the world of Bryson, absolutely pathetic. Um, but I've got a really strong three wood. So um, Ping have just made me this. I've used a Callaway three wood for a number of years quite effectively, a strong 13 degree three wood that I used it on holes where I wasn't very comfortable with my driver in terms of wind direction or visually. I pull my three wood out and I could hit that just as far as my driver, quite frankly, on a flight. So, you know, uh, it doesn't carry as far, but because it goes lower, it runs a lot. Anyway, Ping have made me this 12 degree three wood. Um, same shaft as my driver to keep the continuity in terms of feel which i really like and yeah this is um this is a pretty new club this has not been in the bag more than a week but so far from where i've been on the course it's uh, it's absolutely brilliant this is really just a second tee option you know i i'm this isn't a club i would hit into par five so you just uh, i'm not going to be able to get the flight on it but that doesn't bother me you know in terms of all the priorities second shots into par fives for me are, are very much down the bottom i carry four wedges almost for the you know, opposite to that really. Um, but this is just a second tee club option, yeah, purely so that I can know that I can go on a golf course and never be faced with a tee shot that's gonna strike uh, fear into my brain. So uh, yeah, that's, that's the whole point of my setup at the top of the bag. So I have a five wood as well, which I won't always use, but I'll use around some courses, you know, um, I'll either use probably a five wood, a two iron or a three iron. So I always like to carry four wedges and I always like to have the two strong options at the top. So that basically means for me, I have to choose between a five wood, a two iron or a three iron. That will change based on the course, uh, you know, par fives, if there's a number of par fives where I'm probably gonna be having to hit this. Uh, but certainly when it comes to more links courses, I won't be carrying a five wood, I'll be the two iron or the three iron. But yeah, this is uh, just a, I don't even know what degree, I think it's like 17 and a half degrees on here. So uh, just a five wood. and. This carries about 250, so it goes a lot higher than my three wood. Uh, goes a good distance still, so uh, it's quite a versatile club. You know, if you can, you can get a high fade and it can go 230, or you could hit a strong draw and it could go 260. So it's um versatile club. This yeah. actually is a slightly different shaft. Now I, I have got one in the same shaft, which I'm going to test with, um, but because um, because I've hit so many good shots with this club really in the since i've had it I, i'm i'm reluctant just to change for the sake of changing you know i i yeah have a good relationship with this club so i'm uh, in no no desire to, to make changes too quickly yeah so like i said the three iron will go if the five wood's not in there or the two iron but i'll always carry the four iron through to lob wedge so um three iron is in an i210 just to help me get a bit of a bit more height so i use eye blades all the way through from four to four to well pitching wedge but uh the three irons and I-210. So it just gives me a bit more lift, a bit more flight initially, um, which which is great for a long iron. You know, it tends to be with my swing, four iron, I don't have a massive issue getting enough height, but three iron I do. So, uh, you know, anything to help that is, is great. And um, I think so yeah. when we tested, it was probably an extra five yards difference in the air, um, possibly more even. So yeah, that's, uh, that's a good club. And then, yeah, like I said, four iron through. So. Um, I've actually just been made a set up of slightly offset. So when I moved to Ping, I had the, the I-210s through the bag and the, the three, four and five iron had some offset, which I've never used in my life, but I really liked, especially as my miss in the last year has been right a lot. And I just felt that it combated that quite nicely. So I asked the guys in America uh, during this whole lockdown period, I spent an hour with them online and it was brilliant. And they told me that Bernard Langer has got offset through the bag. And I said, listen, that's something I want to try. 
So they've built me a setup in America and they're all in. So um, they've, they've got some, basically even my pitching wedge has got some offset on it, which um, would be different to you know, most, most clubs. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, these are all new and um, a bit more offset. I've gone back to the Dynamic Gold X100 shaft, which is what I used through 2017 and as a kid. So I've, I've gone back a bit. For the last year and a half, I've kind of flitted around between four or five different shafts, which I suppose I don't love to do. You know, I would like a bit more consistency. And uh, yeah, these shafts are what I grew up with playing. And um, the combination of that shaft, the offset, and they've gone a bit more upright. Um, so far, I really like. I think they're showing some good signs in practice. So. Yeah, well, I haven't played, obviously, you know, didn't play a lot for a while, but um, I've played a bit recently. I mean, I spent a good good few hours testing these a couple of weeks ago, well, about a week ago, actually, and um, they were very good. You know, I, 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 I think I've made the game a little tougher for myself with the setup I've had, actually, and uh, maybe I haven't been swinging it quite as poorly as it's felt based on the results. So, you know, it's... Um, yeah, I'm glad I I'm glad I spent the time with them that I did, and uh, and I think these are going to help me moving forward. But um, yeah, I've played a bit in the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so pitching wedge, um, and then I go 52, 56, 60. Although the lofts I actually think are 51, 55, 59, um, just to match with the rest of my bag really. But uh, yeah, these are the uh, the Glide 3.0s. Um, they've all you know they've been shaved. So so uh, my lob wedge is a good example that they've they've really done a nice grind for me where um, what I particularly like about this these wedges um, they match to my wedges from last year which I got on really well with is they've got quite a thick uh, quite a wide sole um, but they've managed to shave off the front so that I can get the best of both worlds if it's a tight lie there's not a lot of bounce but if I'm in the bunker or I need the club to bounce it can work that as well with the thicker sole so uh, yeah I um, or the wider sole I should say so yeah um, I'd say it's fairly straightforward if you match the grind and the shape of the head. So this lob wedge is very similar to the one I was using last year, um, to be honest. So it's not really much of a shift at all. Uh, I mean, these, they, you know, they feel slightly firmer off the face pings than the Mizunos I was using. And, and I know that every brand feels different. So, but that was never really a concern for me. You know, feel is something that you can get used to very quickly. Um, so it's more important that you get the grind right and this type of stuff, which I, I feel like we're doing now. So, um, yeah, I, I interestingly, last year at the Italian Open, I, I broke my lob wedge um, halfway through the tournament and I had to go and buy one from the pro shop. And uh, I went and bought uh, one of these and used it over the weekend in what was really tricky kind of Bermuda type grass around the greens. And I couldn't believe how much easier it was to chip with. So it was a bit, you know, it's a bit of an eddy thing, but uh, breaking clubs, getting a new one and realizing, oh, that's very good. And then moving forward. So um, yeah, putter is a uh, PLD it's called. So um, they kindly made this up for me in America. So uh, I quite like, the, it's like a, it's a fang shape, as you can see but it's quite a small head. It's got a really good balance to the head. Um, and they've made it for me with no grooves. So I wanted a really firm face with no grooves and uh, that's exactly what they've done. So you would struggle to um, buy this off the shelf. So um, yeah, it's 35 inches in length. So it suits my uh, my kind of upright claw grip and um, feels nice, it's nice and firm, which is always something that I like about putters. So, um, well, I've always felt that if a firmer putter, the smash factor tends to be higher. So you can, so my problem when I putt in tournaments is my pace gets a bit slow. So I want something that can compensate for that. So if I get a little bit short on pace, obviously I want technology that can aid that and get me more out of those, if you, you know, those poor strokes. So I, I've always felt a firmer face does that. And the other anecdotal kind of story was when I played with John Daly once in Denmark and he looked at my putter I can't remember what I was using at the time but it had some grooves on he said you gotta get rid of that and he showed me his putter and it was just completely no grooves he said you don't need a putter with grooves on you know just just get a really firm face and uh, I think there's something in that um, so uh, yeah uh, it's the 2017 Pro V1 I'm still using yeah so when I initially changed to Titleist Ball in 2017 I did use the Pro V1X because it had a lot more backspin so I, I, you know, I wanted that in my bag. I wanted a much more spinny driver and a much more spinny ball to compensate for where I was at and for aid to aid where I'd been. As I played more through that year, though, I realised it was beginning to spin too much. So I changed. I changed just to the Pro V1 that middle of 2017, and then played great through the rest of the year. And I've just never tested another ball since. So um, I probably could and probably should, but honestly, I've never found the time to do it. And uh, Actually, it's never been a better time to do it than now, but 
the guys that tight this, the good thing is they, they tend to be very, you know, they've got so many they got so many ranges of balls. You know, I think they dish out 12 or 15 kinds of balls to tour pros, whether it's the 2013 Pro V1X that some players still love or the most recent Pro V1, you can choose. So it's really great options and they don't pressure you into changing. So um, yeah, that's great.